Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sumber, VV, also WrestlingObserver.com. Let's do AEW, and we'll come back for some more news later. So this was the Blood and Guts show. They opened up with Orange Cassidy and Ethan Page, which I thought was a great match. Was it an all-timer? And this was not an all-timer, but it was great. It was a great match. And uh, we had interference at the end with Dan Lambert, and... Uh, he got the orange juice, which, by the way, I'm very bitter about because something very similar happened to me when I wrestled orange. Orange spat the juice in Lambert's face, hit two orange punches on Ethan Page, and then after trying the entire match, he finally body slammed him and pinned him. There were, I think, 12,000, 13,000 people in the building, and it sounded like it, and they were hot. And uh, because there were two rings, uh, they had to kind of zoom the camera out to show both rings every now and then, which actually made you see how many people were in the building for once. They need to have two rings every week so you can see the size of the crowd. Because <laughs> usually, you know what it reminds me of? Dave's always talking about how he's making the comparison about impact would have 500 people look like 2,000 and et cetera, et cetera. Have you ever watched a UFC event? The UFC will have that flying camera, Okay. And every now and then, usually during the main event as, uh, you know, Buffer is, is doing the ring intros, this flying camera will go back and it'll show like this giant panning shot of the entire building. You're like, holy smokes, there's a lot of people there. But aside from that, when you're actually watching the fights, it may as well be in the UFC gym. I mean, they darken the building. They zoom in really tight on the cage. You could see like a row of ringside and maybe a couple people behind. And that's it. And that's like 95% of the show looks like that. Except every now and then when they decide to zoom back and show you this entire sold out crazy crowd. When there's a knockout, they'll show the big crowd of everybody going crazy. But uh, they kind of shoot 90% of the show the same way. You can't see how many people are there. So anyway, they need to get... Uh, more shots like UFC does, maybe after a match or just that big, crazy, wild. But anyway, there were a lot of people there, and they were loud. They need to utilize the jib better is what you're saying. They sure. Gotta swing yeah. that crane around and get it going. Whatever it's called. We had a Christian promo, <laughs> and this dude comes out, and he is just he's being booed out of the building. Like, they're not even letting this guy talk. And when he finally talks, he explains that I was told to come out here and apologize for my comments last week, particularly the comments I made about Jungle Boy's father. And he says, Jungle Boy, I'm sorry that your entire family isn't dead. And man, this crowd just <laughs> like, I'll talk more about this. It's, it's the same feeling I had about this last week. So I'll, I'll, I, when I have more time tonight with Vinny, I'll talk about it more. But uh, then he then he adds, actually, you know what? I don't want Jungle Boy's mother to be dead. I want her to call me. <laughs> and uh, he's just he's getting so much heat. And then he says, you know, I I was advertised for a match, but it wasn't a match with me. It's a match with this person. And and Luchasaurus has got a brand new entrance. He is now evil Luchasaurus. He's the Douchasaurus. And he comes out <laughs> for a match with Serpentico. Can I say that, Dom? If not, I apologize. <laughs> I won't do it again. But anyway, he comes out for a match with Serpentico. He kills his poor bloke. And then he takes him outside and he choke slams him on the floor and kills him again. And uh, he is an evil, evil dinosaur. Which is a great tie-in, by the way, for this Jurassic Park. Because those dinosaurs, I don't think they were baby faces. Guess it depends on who they ate, right? And we had Scorpio Sky and Wardlow. This was a weird segment because uh, they actually set up like, Wardlow goes, I'll go through everyone you want to to get to you. And then Scorpio goes, all right, well, let's wrestle next week for the title. I was like, that was easy. So we have a street fight next week for the title. FTR and Danhausen beat the Gun Club and Max Caster when uh, Anthony Bones jumped out of the wheelchair because he's no longer injured. He tried to use the crutch. He accidentally hit one of the uh, behind boys, and uh, they got pinned by Danhausen. I'm not sure if I can... I'm being very careful about my language on this the show. The boys? Because of what happened earlier this week. So anyway, uh, then there's a pinfall, and then the storyline afterwards is is Billy Gunn, like all the the uh, the boys and, and uh, Danhausen, 
and uh, FTR, they're all having this big argument. Max Caster, Anthony Bones, and Billy shoves down his son because he sees Caster and Bones. They're, they're more like a son to him. You know, I was looking for sons, by the way, as Christian. There's a lot of ways they could go with all of this, but I expect <laughs> it's probably going to end up being a swerve, and uh, all the guns will turn on uh, Caster and... And they'll end up going babyface, the acclaimed. We had uh, Jay Lethal and Sanjay. I think the uh, the main event of Death Before Dishonor, one of the main events is going to be Jay Lethal versus Samoa Joe for the TV title, which should be good. I would hope so. Yeah. Jade Cargill beat Layla Gray. This was a very complicated segment. But at the end of the day, what happened is Jade beat her. And then uh, she claimed that uh, they had issued an open challenge and nobody except Layla Gray accepted. And uh, which makes the baby faces all look like geeks. But then it turns out that Layla Gray is actually in on all of this and she helps beat up the baby faces. So essentially what happened was Stokely was lying. They they issued the open challenge. Layla just happened to immediately accept icing out the other baby faces. And then she turned on the baby faces when they ran out because uh, Stokely is trying to recruit her, I guess, as a baddie. Although I don't know if she signed, and they kind of shunned her afterwards, so this may have just been a, you know, one-time angle leading to something more. Then we add the uh, main event: Blood and Guts, Moxley, Claudio, Wheeler, Eddie, Santana, Ortiz versus Jericho, Sammy, Hager, Garcia, Matt Menard, and Angelo Parker. And what a match! Holy smokes! Everything you would expect from a match like this. They did it war game style. Six guys. Uh, on each team, once all 12 were in the ring, the uh, what is not called a match beyond began. And uh, it's funny, you should be able to call it. Anyway, so they did all the stuff. They had glass. They had Do people tacks, even realize, chairs, though, that it was two separate matches? Tables. Does anybody realize that? Not really. And then uh, Moxley. Remember how he talked about, I think Moxley just travels around with a bag of blades? Well, this bloke is just cutting dudes left and right. I think he cut everybody who bled in this match. I could be wrong, but, I mean, he was just running rampant in there. That's... And everybody's bleeding. And uh, finally, first, uh, uh, Ty beats up the ref. She opens the door. Jericho starts climbing to the top of the cage. We have Jericho on top. We have Sammy on top of the cage. We have uh, Kingston on top of the cage. And eventually, Claudio ends up on top of the cage. Sammy gets thrown off the cage through a table, so he's dead. Then it's, uh, uh, so we got uh, Matt Menard also climbed up. So the big, the whole shebang at the end is uh, Eddie Kingston gets Jericho in the stretch plum. And uh, he's trying to submit him, just desperately trying to end this match and win and submit Chris Jericho. But at the exact same time, uh, Claudio has got Matt in the sharpshooter, and Matt submits first. So even though Eddie is one, say like mute Mike slurping. Even though Eddie is one, he's furious that he had the chance to actually win the match and submit Jericho, but Claudio submitted Matt first, and so Eddie already hates Claudio. Now he really hates this guy. Claudio's like, bro, we won. We won the match, and he goes for the fist bump, and you could see that, like, Eddie's really disappointed. He's kind of still, you know, happy that they won. He didn't want to lose, but he's still upset. So they're doing a, a build here towards uh, Eddie versus Claudio. That will explode at some point. And uh, I thought the match was, uh, for what it was, you know, I don't know if you're a fan of Blood and Guts or not, listener, dear listener, but uh, for what it was, it was a great, great Blood and Guts match. And uh, everything that you expect, they gave you. And a good finish at the end, which plays into multiple storylines. So I thought it was uh, I thought it was an outstanding show, quite frankly. Yeah, still a satisfying victory with the good guys winning. But this Eddie Kingston, Claudio thing that stretches back years and years, that's going to play itself out more. So we have something coming from this, which is good. Let's take it back to the beginning of the show, though. Sometimes the simplest things. How old school, for as many old school guys as hate Orange Cassidy, maybe even some of them they don't like Ethan Page, that match working 
towards a body slam, which ended up being the finish, was awesome. And that shouldn't be forgotten about on a night that obviously is going to be dominated by people remembering blood and guts. Same thing with Christian. I know some people thought it was too low of a blow last week when he mentioned that Jungle Boy's father was dead, but it felt to me context is everything. WWE tends to look, and I can understand it's touchy for anybody, but it seemed to be last week Christian was building to that. And the way he was building that crowd and the way the crowd was going with him, like to me, that that line was coming. And I think in the context of what it was, it got the ooh, it got people really after Christian. And once again this week, he shows how good he is. Remember when he had the dollar bet with Chris Jericho about the date with Trish? And then they have the match at Mania, and Christian turns on Jericho, and the swerve goes completely opposite of the way people thought it was going to go. And he has the kiss with Trish, and it's just nasty. And it just, he was at the height of his great sliminess. That's what this feels like. He is so good. And I don't know what you can do with Luchasaurus, but at least they got a little bit of a different spin on him. So we'll see what happens. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back on the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper, BB, also WrestlingObserver.com if you want to uh, text us. What are your thoughts on blood and guts, everything else? 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com, at Brian Alvarez on Twitter. And uh, some other quick news notes here. NXT ratings, 575. Down 10% from last week. 0.11 in 1849, 42nd on cable. So whatever bump they got, they got a big bump last week, actually, as a result of, uh, I presume, everything going on with Vince. They got plugged on every single new show you can think of. They had a great SmackDown number, a great NXT number, a great Raw number. This week we had another great Raw number because of John Cena. But then NXT, back to... uh, Point one one. So we'll see how SmackDown does on Friday. I don't know if they have anything for SmackDown. What do they have on SmackDown Friday? I think the only thing they've announced is everybody that's going to be in the Money in the Bank. Oh matches yeah, the are summit going to appear. Yes, there's a Women's Money in the Bank <laughs> summit. Whatever the heck that means. We've also got uh, New Japan bout official for Ric Flair's last match. Clark Connors, our main man, Clark, will be facing Ren Narita. July 31st. So the lineup thus far for the show called Ric Flair's Last Match has Clark Connors, Ren Narita, Killer Cross versus Davey Boy Smith Jr. That'll be a clubber in one. Uh, Davey Richards and Eddie Edwards versus the Motor City Machine Guns, which should be awesome. Jordan Grace versus Deanna Parazzo and Rachel Ellering in a three-way for the Impact Knockouts Championship. I believe the title's on the line. Titles may not be on the line for these matches, but these matches are happening. Josh Alexander against uh, Jacob Fatu. And actually, yes, those are both title matches. And then the main event will be the main event of Ric Flair's last match, everybody. Will be Ric Flair's last match. What is it? I don't know. (laughs) They haven't announced it yet. We just know. It will be Ric Flair's last match. They haven't announced it. We don't know what it is. I just, I want you to now try to take off your shirt and say, the shirt is too tight. And then just, uh... Well, after vacation, it is too tight. It's... Uh, Lex. Uh... What the heck's the match? I, great we, Moda. Didn't they half announce it, like, months ago? It was going to be, like, uh... No, well, Rick was Flair Rick, and FTR versus the Rock and Rolls and somebody else. Ricky Steamboat. Ricky Steamboat. And now, said, nah. <laughs> I mean, you can't just announce it'll be Ric Flair and FTR versus the Rock and Rolls and a mystery partner. Maybe they don't. Now know. it's like totally off the table. It's just like he's going to have a wrestling match, his last one. <laughs> Buy your tickets now, everybody. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, now that uh, I mean, is it going to be a one-on-one now with somebody? Or are they trying to figure that out? Is it? Well, it, clearly the they're roll- trying to figure something out because they haven't announced the match yet. Well, my question is because if you look at those matches on paper, you, you take any of those matches and you go, that well, that's pretty good. 
And if you add the Rock and Roll Express against FTR for the second time around, who, not being involved in the Flair match, I mean, it's another nice addition to that card. So I wonder if they're still going to be on it or not. This person says, maybe we'll finally see Ric Flair versus a broom. No? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I was close if you ever watch one of those Rufus Jones matches. Alan Angel's done with AW. Well, his contract expired. He's on a uh, he, he's. They've got a per show deal. So if they want to use him and he wants to do it, he can. Yeah, uh, I reported that you reported that because that's what was reported on the front page of the site. Yeah, because I reported that. So that's how it works, people. If Brian actually says it and says he's reporting it, then you can actually report it as Brian, Brian Alvarez is reporting it. 24 years old, he says, is of June 30th. My contract is expired. I'm nothing but grateful for the two years I spent there. I love AEW. Was, is the best place ever to work. Got to wrestle some of the best wrestlers in the world on a weekly basis, as well as travel to some of the most amazing cities, meet some of the best fans in the world. No hard feelings between myself and AEW or Tony Khan. Had a great time in AEW. Would have loved to have stayed, but I'm extremely excited for my future in pro wrestling and he says he's going to work as many towns as he can meet as many fans as he can wrestle as much as he can so a lot of people have asked like well couldn't you do that before well yeah he could have but i think i don't know exactly how it works but my presumption is that if you're under contract let's say that uh defy wants to use alan angels okay and he was and he was signed to AEW. My presumption is that it would cost X amount of money to get him through AEW. But if he's no longer with AEW, then they can negotiate directly with Alan Angels. And if the guy wants to come in and work for twenty five bucks because he wants experience, he can do that. A booker's fee. So I don't know. If, I don't know if you'd call it a booker's fee. But I don't know how it works. But my presumption well, is certainly my presumption is. He the the amount of money you would need to book Alan Angels when he was under AEW contract was likely more than Alan Angels is going to charge now that he's not under AEW contract and working a per show deal, which means he probably will get far more bookings. That's that's what I presume is going on here. If I'm wrong, uh, I'm welcome to be corrected, but I, I think that's why. You know, people are asking, well, why did you have to quit to do indies when you could do indies and not quit, but like. You know, why couldn't you do that when you were under contract? So Well, it's also, I think, a peace of mind thing as well, too, because obviously, you know, John Moxley, if he has a chance to go to GCW or wherever, he's going to take it. And But if you're an Allen Angels, you know, say you get hurt in a Beyond ring or say you get hurt in a Defy ring or whatever it is, you know, then you you screw up any chance or possibility you may have on AEW on national TV. And I know people would say, well, he wasn't on national TV. Well, you never know when you're going to get the call. You know, this is a guy who's 24 years old who ended up making it onto national TV at a very early time in his career. So you never know how these things are actually ultimately going to work. So I'm not sure if, you know, what the limitations were for, for him, but I think that probably plays somewhat into people's minds that you don't want to go out there. Remember Mance Warner? I mean, he did all that fighting to get out of his MLW contract. There was all that big rigmarole. And then, you know, immediately after that, or not long after that, he breaks his leg. <laughs> and it's like, well, if he was going to sign with AEW or go somewhere, now he's lost that chance for a little bit. So... You never know what what's going through somebody's mind. Well, the other thing is, Alan Angels is twenty four. Okay, I'm I'm uh, I'm forty seven right now. If I if I were offered a deal to make a hundred thousand dollars a year, fifty thousand dollars a year, and never wrestle, hey, let's do it. But if you're twenty four, it's like, bro, I'll take the same money or even a little bit less. Just get me out there uh, twice a weekend so that I can really get better at this whole wrestling thing. So that I can, you know, make more money at some point in my career uh, with some company. So I would presume that's that's similar to uh, what's going on here. Can I report that? No, of course not. I will not. I will not. I will not sign anywhere for fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> Kidding me? It's my net worth now for my you. net worth is ten, twelve million. You know what I am? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a decamillionaire. That's what they call a him, right? Deca millionaire. Deca millionaire. <laughs> so no, I'm not going to quit everything just to wrestle for not wrestle for fifty thousand a year. Now Christian, on the other hand, that guy's all up in this idea of working no dates. Well, he's working dates, but he's not wrestling. 
See, and making he a lot of money. all over that that catchphrase that he had. Outwork everybody. What does that mean? See, he outworked everybody. I like it. Sangha versus Lee stands on Lee's chest when she's down. Bangs her uh, her on the apron. Pull, um, puts elbow on her chin. Through her out of the ring you know it doesn't really matter a lot in 2022 granny but uh no. lee in fact identifies as a man <laughs> legend versus woman. perez that was another nxt can you believe the little guy beat him he beat legend a that. little guy it's now more... roxanne perez is a man yeah Roxanne. No, no, these were two women. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me, Granny. You gotta be kidding me today. God. <laughs> if you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.